Alright gang, welcome back to another episode on this channel and this one is packed, I'm telling you. It is well over 20 minutes long and I value your time, I sincerely do. So I included some chapter marks so you can conveniently jump around and check out the different sections of this video and there are a lot. I took a couple of super beautiful photos shooting sunrise twice at two different locations with my friend Mitch. I checked out different ports and beaches and secret spots and I found a super interesting article on the internet which I wanted to share with you guys. There's going to be a music tip in this video so it's a lot. Plus I've been shooting the majority of this video using my vintage Helios 44-2 Soviet lens and I really think it shows so it's a lot. Um, I guess without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so two weeks of vacation on this island in October with the family and friends, that's the setup. Day drinking, hanging out, wearing pretty much nothing but the same pair of swim shorts five days in a row, it's the best. Anyway, after a few days of maximum chill, I'm kind of getting this itch. I have to get out there watching the sunrise. Now, if you're a parent and if you went through the first couple of months of a human being one or more times, you know what I'm talking about. Getting up earlier than absolutely necessary is something both your body and mind is rejecting in an incredibly visceral way. So I hit up my friend Mitch, who is a dad of four and located in Asiambart, which is in the southeast of Mallorca. And I knew if he can do it, I can do it too. But Holy shit.
All right, what else we got? Cala Figuera. Uh, this is a super cute marina and fishing community located in the southeast, and it is often referred to as Mallorca's most beautiful fishing village. And that's mostly because the pace of life here seems to have stood still. It is absolutely astonishing how a place like this can be both so lovely and calm at the same time. There are a lot of boat houses with stone walls and dark green shutters and doors which provide a beautiful contrast against the blue sea. It is just the perfect place to hang out and shoot some film. Okay, cool. Relaxation started to kick in, the light is awesome, the first couple of rolls have been shot, all is great. And I'm not gonna lie, but I could spend the whole trip at the beach or at least the pool. But once I got some sun hours, aka San Miguel's, in my system, I'm kinda open for discussion. And let's be honest, I haven't seen much of the island before. It's been time to see something new, like the mountains for example. In fact, the whole west coast is a blind spot to me. We decided to check out Soye, which turned out to be a nightmare to park at, but once you arrived, there's this historic train ride to Port Soye, and that one is really worth the pain. It's got this beautifully preserved lacquered wood interior, and you can basically just watch the Mallorcan landscape unfold in slow motion at like 3 miles per hour.
Now Port Soyer looks a little bit like the tiny version of Port Andras, which is another place I haven't been before. And this one is basically a haven for the rich and the famous. Port Andrach has some of the most expensive properties in Spain, which is why people like Brad Pitt and Claudia Schiffer have been chilling over there on a regular basis. Okay, been here, done that, but if you ask me, it feels kind of dead to me, but whatever. Why am I doing this? I mean, why do I get up at unholy hours in my holidays only to put an extremely expensive piece of paper into a 40-year-old camera, doing some guesswork on the lighting conditions, putting days, if not weeks of work into scanning the negatives, uh, scripting, editing, color grading, animating this video only to get a couple of hundred views and literally zero cash and and apart from that why are you here why, why did you choose watching this over something else it's because of a thing called effort heuristic and i found this incredible article called the appeal of handmade in an era of automation written by adam whites on the website of the kellogg school of management check this out the effort heuristic is a rule of thumb whereby people consciously or subconsciously judge the value of something based on the perceived effort put into it so there's a professor named Ryan Buell and he made a famous field experiment at a university dining hall. He assigned customers randomly to either observe workers preparing their sandwiches before paying or simply order a sandwich for pickup the following day. Now you guessed it, surprisingly those who watched the workers despite longer wait times reported enjoying their food more. And there is more, intention signals purpose. There's this remarkable quote from Christian Louboutin and he goes like this. High heels are a complete invention, an extravagance. They're far from natural, but it's the impracticality that I adore. I prefer the useless to the useful. Now, I don't know if this is something that a machine is ever gonna think unless we program it to think and act that way. So with all of these mind-bending examples of complex text-to-video models, all I'm seeing is mankind striving for perfection. But what I'm actually resonating with are things like affection, despair, criticism or effort. So will a machine ever be able to come up with a dead simple but helpful invention like a post-it? Or design a decades lasting classic automobile like the Porsche 911? Will it ever be able to direct a music video like Childish Gambino's This Is America? I think creative fields like photography and even a YouTube channel like this one are proof that people like to watch people learn and grow and put effort into basically anything. Now, why am I doing this? It's, it's because I enjoy the experience and you enjoy watching me putting the effort in. It makes me feel human and one of those moments that really made me feel human was another sunrise which my friend Mitch and I were about to catch at a monastery in the mountains which was truly magical.
So this trip surely but slowly came to an end. But there was one last spot that Mitch told me to check out, which involved a little hike at dinner time. I got curious about this place when I saw a photo that Mitch shot of it with his Pantex 6.7 and I was like, I can do that. Well, as beautiful as this place is, almost too easy to shoot, I have to admit that I was wrong. I couldn't do it, and I shouldn't even have tried to. It is a great example of the human touch. Mitch's approach to shoot this place was unique. He acts like a filter, and this filter will always be different from mine. A copy will always be a copy, which is why I'm confident that the art of photography and art in general will always have an edge over generative art. AI may even make human art more valuable as passion, a sense of purpose and individual experience are things machines won't be able to emulate anytime soon. Isn't that a comforting outlook on the future? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Generative AI is here to stay, and there's no other way to deal with it other than to embrace it and make it another incredible tool, because that's what it is. There's no doubt that this is going to change everything, and I'm not even cracking the news here, I know that, except that human beings are born with intention and a gut feeling, and this on God is the only thing we will need to preserve in order to excel as a species. I hope you're getting something out of these videos and if you do, I would really appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel or... <laughs> or, or, hear me out, you go f yourself and I keep doing what I'm doing. Oh, the music tip. Uh, you, you have to check out Hilario Neto's latest album, Phaser, and especially his song, Best For You and Me. It's the bomb. Trust me. Okay, thanks. Bye.